On today's show, Tesla finally begins to ramp up Model 3 production, a new battery technology promises to triple electric car range, and a final stage cancer sufferer gets bumped up the Model 3 delivery list so that he can enjoy his new car for the short time that he has left. These stories and more coming up next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, a professional musician turned electric vehicle crusader, and I'm here to bring Kiwis a weekly roundup of the biggest news stories around the world in relation to cleaner, greener transport. As always, thanks for joining me. We're starting today's show with news from Sweden, where Volvo has quietly rolled back some of the promises it made on autonomous vehicle technology four years ago. You see, back then, Volvo said it had hoped by now to have 100 autonomous vehicles operating on the roads of Sweden as part of its Drive Me public test program. Those vehicles were meant to help Volvo refine its Level 4 and Level 5 autonomous vehicle tech ahead of a 2021 launch of Volvo's first autonomous vehicle. Now, however, Volvo says it will have 100 participants in the program, but not 100 vehicles. This should help Volvo respond more quickly to improvements in autonomous vehicle sensors and to build more progressively advanced vehicles, rather than be stuck with old tech. The announcement comes the same week as Tesla CEO Elon Musk pushed back Tesla's timeline for fully autonomous vehicles. So it's clear that Volvo isn't alone in its change of plans. Tesla may be pushing back its plans for full autonomy, but that doesn't mean that Tesla isn't committed to autonomous vehicle tech. Indeed, this week, Elon Musk confirmed that Tesla is working on designing its own computer chip to allow it to further advance its autopilot program, marking an eventual shift away from NVIDIA's specialist autonomous vehicle chipsets. It's not clear if Tesla will be making its own chips, but given Musk's other companies all make heavy use of AI, machine learning, and other automated processes, I wouldn't put it past Musk to either purchase or start up a computer chip company. Watch this space. Staying with Tesla a little longer, yes, there's a fair number of Tesla stories this week, the number of companies placing orders for the Tesla Semi is on the rise and now includes PepsiCo, Anheuser-Busch, Walmart and more. And at the same time, it appears Tesla is ramping up its parts order for Model 3, at least according to suppliers who say that Tesla's asking them to make more Model 3 parts. Tie this in with Model 3 deliveries now happening across the US, and it's clear that Tesla is eager to make up for the slow Model 3 production start. Since parts orders likely happen several months ahead of actual production, I'd expect production ramp up to take really off towards the end of Q1 next year. So if you're a Model 3 reservation holder, keep an eye out for that invitation to spec your new car. Ever since it participated in the destruction of the RAV4 EV back in the early noughties, Toyota has been vocally sceptical about electric vehicles, instead focusing on hydrogen fuel cells and hybrid cars. But now Toyota is beginning to admit it's been wrong and is a little late to the game in the EV development sphere. And in order to play catch up, it's announced a big deal with Panasonic. Yes. Tesla's battery partner to develop prismatic high-capacity battery cells that it says will be used in future electric vehicles. It's worth remembering, of course, that at one point Toyota was a shareholder in Tesla and even had Tesla build its limited production second-generation Toyota RAV4 EV. I can't help but wonder where it would be now had it not sold those shares. What do you think? And now for something completely different, courtesy of the Unity, a brand new crowdfunded electric car which was recently officially unveiled. Designed and built in Sweden, this unique looking car comes with a 22 kilowatt hour battery pack, seats two in tandem, one behind the other, and says the company behind it will manage 300 kilometers, that's 186 miles, on a charge of its battery pack. Priced from $17,500 or equivalent, it's also rather affordable and says Unity will come with five years of free charging in Europe thanks to a partnership with European utility company E.ON that will provide you with a solar powered charging station for your home. The car is due to launch in 2019 and if you want one, you can put down a deposit today of just $175. US it's certainly a cool sounding vehicle, but as we've seen before, there's a really big difference between prototype and fully fledged production. So here's hoping Unity makes it. 
Next up, it's time for a little quick reminder about Ecotricity's Eco Wholesale Energy product that could be saving you up to $400 a year on your home electricity bill or $4,000 on your business electricity bill. It works by linking you directly to 100% renewable energy wholesale prices after paying a small admin fee and it's the most affordable Carbon Zero certified electricity that Kiwis can buy. So make sure you sign up and start saving those pennies today by following the link just below. While Tesla may be in the spotlight with its semi, Daimler's Fuso quietly began delivering its all new Ecanto electric truck this week in Europe. While it's no Tesla semi, it's not designed to be. The Fuso e Canter is perfect for urban delivery routes, where daily total mileages are rarely above 100 miles, that's 160 kilometers. Among the first customers to get their new electric delivery trucks are DHL, DB Shekhar, Renus, and Dasha, and there are plenty more customers waiting in the wings. My terrible pronunciation aside, here's hoping these new electric delivery vehicles really help make our cities cleaner, greener, and quieter too. I'm often asked by viewers to cover new battery technology on this show, and this week your prayers have been answered, courtesy of a team of researchers at the University of Waterloo, who claim to have developed a brand new lithium metal chemistry for electric car batteries that they say is up to three times more energy dense than current lithium ion batteries, giving an immense improvement in range. Part of that new battery cell chemistry involves adding a new sulfur and phosphorus mix to the electrolyte, which coats the battery electrodes in a thin protective layer and slows down the usual dendritic buildup on the electrodes, thus giving the battery improved cell capacity for far longer than usual. Here's hoping that new technology comes to market, but as I've said before, there's a big difference between something working in the lab and something making it into production. His fingers crossed that it does. When I mention the name Continental, you may think of car tyres and perhaps other automotive parts, but as it prepares to get ready for CES next year, Continental is upping the ante on both its autonomous and electric vehicle fronts, promising us an automated wireless charging technology system, as well as a bi-directional vehicle charger that makes it possible to turn any electric car into a giant battery on wheels. The details are kind of sparse at the moment, but with CES just a few weeks away and myself, Kate Walton Elliott and our new camera guy Brandon Yates all due to go, you can be sure that we'll cover this announcement and others in as much detail as we can possibly muster. And finally, cancer sucks. It, it really does. And if you've ever had family members fight it, my dad died of brain cancer. One of my sisters is currently undergoing chemotherapy right now, while my other sister is in final stages of breast cancer. You'll know that there are lots of things that you can do, but it's the little things that really can help cancer sufferers and their families get through the hell you wouldn't want to wish on your worst enemy. And this week, thanks to a help from Tesla fans and investors, one Tesla Model 3 customer who is in the final few months of life with stage four cancer, was treated like a VIP by Tesla and bumped up the Model 3 reservation queue just so that he could experience a few months of happiness with his new car. You know, the look on his face is so amazing, and I'm so pleased that Tesla pulled out all the stops and got him that car. And on a more personal note, if you can, please do donate to a cancer charity. There are thousands of men and women working hard to beat this horrible disease, and they need all the help that they can get. And on that note, it's time for me to bring another episode to a close. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show, and if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness, so make sure you hit that notification bell below to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. As always, enjoy your weekend, make sure you do something fun, enjoy the sun and help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. As always, thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.